Hey everybody, I'm C. Andrew Nelson, founder of Aquatacy. This is the airport. That is an airplane. And I'm going to be getting on that airplane. I'm going to Brussels, Belgium. I'm invited to be a guest at Comic-Con Brussels in Brussels, Belgium. Why did the promoters of this pop culture fandom event want to have a fish tank guy from YouTube as a guest at their convention? Well, because in my other life, I'm an actor, visual effects artist, animator, and voiceover performer who has worked on the Star Wars saga, the Jurassic Park franchise, and many other films. And also because I spent 12 years playing the character of Darth Vader for Lucasfilm and the Lucas Companies. Sorry, I kind of buried the lead on that, didn't I? I played Vader for film, television, commercials, print ads, video games, magazine covers, product packaging, and live appearances. As a visual effects artist, I've worked on the effects for the Star Wars prequels, Galaxy Quest, Jurassic Park 3, Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, The Time Machine, The Perfect Storm, Rocky Balboa, The Last Mimsy, Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, Rush Hour 3, Enchanted, The Kite Runner, Spiderwing Chronicles, Race to Witch Mountain, Jumper, and a whole bunch more. And as a voice actor, among the many characters I've voiced over the years, I provided the voice of Luke Skywalker for numerous LucasArts games. Because of all these credits, I'm fortunate enough to be invited to various conventions around the United States and abroad. But this is my first convention appearance in Europe, and my very first time visiting Belgium. Fun! Not so fun, however, is the long flight. So I'm flying from San Francisco to Brussels, Belgium. Um, but right now, I'm in Dublin, Ireland. That's the, uh, the little stopover where I've got to change planes. Uh, it was a very, very long flight. Ten hours. Ten hours, I believe it was. I don't know. I lost track of it. And I can't sleep on a plane. So by the time I get to Brussels, Belgium, I will have been awake for probably 24 or more hours. Um, yeah, so I'm probably going to sleep when I get there. Sleep and sleep and sleep until it's time to do the convention. No, I'm probably going to have at least one day of looking around Belgium for a moment uh, before we do the convention. But anyway, uh, there you go. There's the airport right there. That's, this is as much of Ireland as I'm going to see while I'm here, sadly, but uh, here I am. It doesn't take nearly as long to get from Dublin to Brussels. Only about an hour and a half. But by this time, it's been 15 hours since I left San Francisco and 24 hours since I last slept. My mission now is just to get to the hotel. Now to find my driver. Hmm. Supposedly there's a driver here to pick me up. So I'm looking for somebody holding up a card with my name on it. somewhere. Found him. This guy. Ah, greeted by an old friend. Though I may be happy to be headed to my room, I can't shake the nagging feeling that there was something I was supposed to do before I left home. Something fish tank related. Oh well, I'm too exhausted to figure it out now. Time for me to hibernate. Refreshed and ready to face the weekend. Comic-Con Brussels is held at the huge Tour and Taxis Pavilion in downtown Brussels. This event rivals stateside conventions like WonderCon and the San Diego Comic-Con. People waited hours in the rain to get in. And believe it or not, as massive as this venue is, day one of the show sold out completely. This show is featuring guests from Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Doctor Who, 
Power Rangers, Game of Thrones, Back to the Future, and of course, all of us who worked on Star Wars. Our group of Star Wars people included Mike Edmonds, Patrick Comerford, Matt Denton, Mike Quinn, Ari Decker, Lewis McLeod, Brian Muir, and Julian Glover. That's Julian walking in front of me, an incredible actor who's been in just about everything and who was honored as a commander of the Order of the British Empire by Queen Elizabeth II. He's one heck of a nice guy, too. Right, time to get down to business. They have everything at this show. Cosplayers, model builders, collectibles dealers, and even a wrestling ring. Something for everybody. So great to meet all the fans at the show, and to make some wonderful new friends with the other guests as we swap war stories of working on various productions, adventures on the convention circuit, or our tales of our years in theater. All good things come to an end, though, and it's time to say goodbye to Brussels and head back home, where I'm pretty certain there's something I neglected to attend to with my tanks before my trip. Can't dwell on that now. I need to concentrate on getting through the crowd at the Brussels airport. I have never seen such utter chaos and confusion. Lines are backed up at the counters, the airport security checks, and at border security. It's that last section that appears to be the issue. Apparently, the border security officers are on strike, or at least a partial strike. There are only two security booths open to process all the travelers leaving Europe. So many people around me are panicking about possibly missing their flight or missing their connection at the next airport. Personally, I know there's no point in worrying. Either you're going to make it or you don't. There are much worse things in this world than missing a flight. Fortunately for me, there were several kind people ahead of me who told me to jump ahead in line. I didn't even ask to do so. Also, my flight to Dublin waited for everyone to make it through border security. However, the chaos continues upon arrival at the Dublin airport as security takes everyone aside that is heading to San Francisco and quickly ushers us through some secret hallways and staircases to rush us through yet another security check and through U.S. Customs to get us on our San Francisco-bound flight before it takes off without us. Okay, I just had to run through an airport through all kinds of strange security, including U.S. Customs at the Dublin Island Airport. So now uh, I'm finally heading home. I got <sighs> 10 hours. I got 10 hours to fly. Three in-flight movies, two meals, and one fairly uninteresting magazine later, and I finally see the familiar landscape of the San Francisco Bay Area as we touch down at SFO International. I am back. I am back on U.S. soil. Uh, this was quite an adventure. And you know what? Um, the adventure continues. Um, my phone is not working right, and uh, I still need to get back to the house. And uh, I think there's something I was supposed to do before I left. Oh. Home. <laughs> it was a great trip, but I am glad to be home. Well, let me tell you. And now I remember what it was I was supposed to do before I left. I was supposed to open this package. Do you remember when I got that $5 voucher on eBay and I decided to try to use it to get $5 worth of cryptocorin for free from a seller that turned out to be in Malaysia and it took three weeks for it to ship to me and they sent it in a flimsy envelope and it arrived totally smashed and cooked but I didn't care because it didn't cost me anything? I did it again. I'm hopeless. So I received another one of those $5 vouchers from eBay and I thought, all right, let me give this another go. But it's different this time. This time I ordered from a vendor right here in California. And I didn't order something as delicate as Cryptocorin. I ordered an Nymphaea Rubra Lily, something that I could put into the Thailand project. And it arrived quickly. And I didn't get to open it right away. And then it sat on my desk for a long time. And then I went to Europe. And now I'm back. And now it's been... <laughs> well over a month. <laughs> I have no idea what this is going to be like when I open it up, huh? How about we take a look, okay? Uh, 
I really don't know what to expect here with this. It's been sitting here so long. Get this out of the way. And uh, by the way, did you notice my uh, Odin Makes uh, sticker right there? Odin Makes, Odin Makes, great channel. Check him out, great guy. <laughs> Not like he needs me. He's got way more subscribers than I do, but he's just a terrific guy. Let's see. Is this bulb actually in decent shape or not? Well, they've packed this very nicely. By the way, this came from Aquarium Plants Factory in Fontana, California. Really nice company, so if this is in bad shape, it is not their fault, it's my fault. <laughs> so, let's see what we got here. I gotta use the scissors here. I love this, I love this, this foil bubble wrap. This is really cool. I have to keep this. All right, moment of truth. And it's still solid. It's still a bulb. Okay. That's good. It's not mushy. It's not falling apart or anything. Uh, we'll cut it open again. Hope it's not completely dried out. I don't think it will be. But this is really great the way that they pack this all up and seal it. All right. Don't see any mold or anything like that on it, but um, I don't see any leaves or anything like that either. So we're going to throw this in the tank and see what happens. I don't even know what, which way is up on, which way is up on a bulb like this? You know, I, I don't know. You can't tell. It just, it's just a bunch of, of weird shapes and <laughs> such, but uh, there we have it. It doesn't look like much now but hopefully it will turn into a beautiful, beautiful lily. So, all right, this is going in the tank. Well, there you have it. <laughs> I'm tired, I'm punchy, we're done. I need to get some sleep. Have you ever ordered aquatic plants through the mail and then forgotten to open them when they arrived? <laughs> Probably not. Have you ever been to a Comic-Con or some kind of fandom convention? Have you ever been to Belgium? Yes, I ordered the waffles and they were delicious. <laughs> If you have, then please leave me a comment down below and tell me all about it. Hope you enjoyed this video. A little bit of a change of pace from what we normally do here on Aquatacy. More fish-centric videos once I get a little bit of sleep. And until next time, blessings to you. I'm going to have such jet lag. <laughs>